Hello. Welcome back to another pen talk. One may ask, what do you put in your room for sprucing it up? So here's my uh, video recording area. I'm getting set up to do the Birmingham order that I just received. But if we scroll over past the closet, we'll see some interesting photographs up on a wall. And these are great because these are from Oaski Squirrel. I think he does excellent photography and I was very fortunate that he sent me some. As you can see, there's some reflection there on the glass. But they're just really nice and I think the four of them form a nice little theme and I can look at that and reminisce about his video on the trip to the bridge and there's the mountains, there's the rabbit that may have decimated his garden and this is something I haven't heard about which I really love as an old farm tractor. So that's what's really nice and now I have some nice decoration on a wall that was playing before. Thanks for tuning in. Today's subject is going to be uh, another order that I placed with the Birmingham Pen Company. I've been very impressed with uh, the nibs. I bought pens from them, some Nemocene pens uh, via Amazon. They were uh, a lot of stuff was being sold through Amazon, but I feel it's better to go direct uh, and buy them from Nick. So this is my order. And as usual, uh, Nick includes a little personal note. He hand tunes the pens. He apologizes about not getting them out within 24 hours. So I just think that's really excellent. And as I showed you before, you get a nice little packing slip in case you forget what you order. So that's really nice. You get a lot of emails that let you know about the order, about the shipping. And of course, I got notification when it was delivered and went to the mailbox and picked up the package. So I ordered four things and, and Nick included a fifth, which I'm very pleased with. So obviously we got some inks. And uh, the navy blue is the one that I ordered and he included the waterfront dusk is just something you wanted me to try. So uh, the two pens you see here have been inked up with these two inks. Always nice to get a little notepad that has Toma River paper in it. So this uh, is going to be my next ink journal uh, when my one I'm using now fills up. I ordered this Knox pen because I don't have a Knox pen. I think black and silver is a classic combination and so I wanted to try it. And you know, if you, when you order these uh, from the Birmingham Pen Company, you get your choice of all the different varieties of Knox nibs. So I got my oblique double broad in here. And that's just really nice. So for not much more than the price of a nib, you get an excellent pen with a nib in it that you can really have some great fun with because the nibs uh, have a great variety of sizes uh, available to you. And this is something else that Nick uh, threw in there. So this is a, a Bulo pen. But those of you that are familiar with pens made in China, this may be extremely recognizable to it. Um, my friend has this exact model. It has the same type of interesting engraving here on the clip. It has the X750 on it, but instead of Bulo, it says Jinhao. So that's what this is, but it's a branded Bulo nib too, and Nick sells Bulo nibs for a very reasonable price uh, on his website. And last but not least, um, you know, I'm not a fan of packaging or anything else like that, but one thing that's nice about what you can do from Birmingham pens is you can buy a pen, and if, obviously it's going to come with uh, no packaging, but if you want packaging for a very reasonable fee, you can get this very nicely done uh, leather stitched case, which you open it up and you can see some more engraving here, a nice soft material. So great presentation case. So that's what's really nice because uh, some of us just buy pens for the pens and not for the packing material. So here with uh, Birmingham pens, you get a choice of uh, buying the packing material separately if you would like to add that to your order especially if you want to make it a gift item. So next we're going to do is, um, these pens have been inked up for a while. I've been writing with them for a while. So we're going to put nib to paper, show you what the colors look like, and show you how these nibs work. I don't have a 
Jinnao you know, X750, but I have a, a couple 450s, and that's the one here that's nice. It was a gift from Larry. Here you have that Bulo pen, and here's a 78G, just to put things in perspective, and we'll uncap them and show you the nib and section. So they're all pull-off caps, standard cartridge converter, um, the caps are very secure, they post nicely, and, and they're pretty big. We'll give you those lengths uh, so you can put them in perspective. And just through the 78G in there, just as a comparison. So if we focus in on the business section, you know, one of the things about at least the 450, it has a contoured uh, section in it, so it kind of uh, positions your fingers in a certain way where the Bulo does not. You know, they both have that, um, you know, metal cap and step here at um, or metal ring and step here between the section and the barrel they have a metal ring at the bottom of the section which is nice and of course the 78g is just a completely different animal into itself but i just wanted to put things in perspective these are both number six nibs so you can swap a lot of different nibs in there you know goulet jin how uh jovo whatever um so that's that's kind of nice so let's see how this nib performs so in the Bulo X750, I put the navy blue ink. And again, there's a little write-up on uh, the name of the ink and how it came to be about. So if I did the normal chromatography, uh, you'll notice that this has similar uh, color characteristics that Dusk had, but it's definitely a stronger pink there. And there's a little green in it. At least it shows up uh, in my eyes. It may not may show up in a, and I and you know it says same little dark line there at the bottom. So I, I let it dry for a day and did the chromatography, and the colors are even more interesting. And there's a slight little beige at the very top there, and then your strong pink that you saw before, kind of a, a blackish blue. And there's a pretty solid uh, line there. So this ink would have some permanence to it uh, based on the chromatography. So this pen feels fine in the hand, um, unposted. It posts okay, doesn't change the balance much. It's, it's not that heavy of a pen considering there's a lot of metal in it. So let's uh, put some ink down. So one thing that's nice is the, the nib is quite ornate and it is uh, has the name of the pen brand on it. So it's one of the things that uh, you know makes it interesting. So why does Jin Hao have a Bulo brand? I couldn't fathom a guess. My theory would be maybe Bulo is less of a Chinese name than Jin Hao, and it's made more for the global markets, but I've not seen it other than on uh, the uh, Birmingham Pen website. So I would say this writes as good, if not better, than, than Jin Hao nibs. I certainly find it to be a very pleasant writer. Pleasant is only have one T, but I got overexcited there. Yeah, you know, the horizontal lines are nice. The vertical lines are okay. And as you can see, you can actually railroad it. And it's, I wouldn't call it soft or flexy, but it's certainly nice and you know, if you want to put some pressure on it on the downward strokes, you can certainly get some line variation. It's like a almost a 3x. So overall, this is a fine pen. I like the uh, matte black and, and silver combo on it. So how do I rate this? I'm going to go with a 5.5. Um, I'm not going to give it a bigger rating because there's, there's nothing really unique about it. It's it's well made, so I think it rates more than a five, but um, we're not going to go above that. So let's transition over to the Knox pen. So for comparison on the Knox pen, we got the 78G again. So you're going to have one pen that's going to be in common with uh, comparison to both the Bulo and the Knox. Then a Jinhao 992, which is, I would say, your standard 
cigar shaped mid sized pen and your knock. So uh, the knock is a little bit longer. Uh, both of them, you know, the, the clip on the knocks is also done well. You know, it's a, it's a nice curve there. Uh, so it's easy to slip on and off of thick fabric. It has some decent uh, spring to it, so it's not going to come out. You know, there's a branding there on the cap band. Not the model, but, you know, obviously the uh, manufacturer. Posted the uh, Knox is the longest pen of this trio. Uh, they all post securely, post relatively deeply, and, and you can use these either posted or unposted if you're going to write with it. And if we zoom in on the business end, you know, these are standard sections, a little bit of concave, a little bit of flare out at the end. You know, all these sections are pretty common. I mean, the 78G is the thinnest, followed by the Knox, and then your uh, 992, which is actually probably a little bit uh, above average, just considering the size of the pen. So that's a good size section for those people that enjoy a little bit more girth you know, between their fingers. So I put the uh, Waterfront Dusk ink. Nick always puts a nice little uh, description, some historical reference material, and to um, the name of the ink. This is the chromatography, and it's kind of interesting. So um, you definitely have a blue component to this, and kind of a pink, but it's not really a pure pink. It's just kind of hard to describe. So, uh, and also it seems to be some permanence there because you've got a little bit of a dark gray line there at the bottom. So this pen uh, fits fine in the hand, unposted. This section's a little bit on the slippery side. It's a very gloss finish on that. It's also a little bit on the thin side, you know, as far as pens go, but certainly not unusable. And your fingers are more comfortable right there in the narrow part. It posts fine, doesn't really change the balance. So this is a pen that would be easy to use, posted or unposted, depending upon what your preferences are. You may see a little skipping. It's hard to write over the camera. And this oblique double broad nib is a little bit sensitive to angle. But this is unbelievably wet. Uh, I would put this nib up against any other nib in any other pen that people who like a gushy, wet, broad, smooth writer, you can't beat this pen. I mean, that's easy to lay down a beautiful patch of ink, very wet ink. So this is the uh, musk, which is kind of a purplish color. And uh, one of my viewers commented on these inks from Birmingham are smoky. And that's a beautiful description of how these colors look when you put them down on paper. So how would I rate this pen? I'm going to give it a seven. Primarily for the nib. I mean, I have other uh, OBB nibs from Knox, and this is certainly the wettest in this pen, so it's a great combination of the feed and the nib. And it shows what this nib can do with uh, a feed that's probably designed for it. Uh, the section's a little small. You know, the quality of the build is nice, but it doesn't wow. So the 7 is basically based on the nib and, and very little uh, in regards to the other pen. But for somebody who wants... Uh, on the small side pen with a beautiful nib that really puts out a lot of ink uh, well made, then this would fit their category. And it comes in different colors, I think. I was just in a matte black mood when, when I uh, ordered it. So I hope you've enjoyed this look of uh, some interesting pens from a local U.S. provider. I know some people may not be comfortable going on eBay and buying uh, from overseas. So here's a local dealer that can uh, provide you with a lot of variety at an excellent pricing and extremely uh, good customer service. 
Um, so that makes uh, purchasing um, easy and very rewarding. So thank you for watching. May you have many wonderful pen experiences. Explore the incredible variety of, of nibs, pens, inks, and paper. So this is the end. Until we meet again, bye. Yes, if you don't do the right angle, you're not going to get it. But when you hit this sweet spot on this nib, it is a wow. A second. Bye-bye.